I do a home vlog because of the fact that we're in lockdown right now. This is the kind of things that I like to do when I'm home and it's something that I can actually relax with. But that's my landscape and I'm kind of obsessive about it and in the springtime there's a lot of things that need to be repaired. We live in the Midwest so the freeze thaw, freeze thaw, it kind of puts things out of whack and moves things around a little bit. So it is springtime and it's actually kind of cold tonight but uh, anyhow it's been cold. We've had to cover up stuff for a few different nights because it got down to frost or freezing so we had to cover things because they're already up they don't know any better so just wanted to go ahead and show you some of the things that i've got so this tree over here this is a flowering pear tree and i've got some hostas and grasses and stuff below need to do a little bit of cleanup inside of the rock and maybe a little bit of trim up got a few weeds and stuff here and there and these pots right here i actually had uh, the burgundy pots kind of everywhere and you can tell how weathered they are and I decided this spring that I was going to go ahead and replace all of my pots but of course when you have massive landscape everything costs so much and just for one pot it can be extremely expensive so I decided to do a cheap fix all of these pots were actually burgundy but they were some of my favorite pots I didn't really see a need to get rid of them they were just kind of ugly but I like the pots, they weren't damaged or anything. So I did the cheap fix and I bought some spray paint and this is how I fixed the problem myself in a very inexpensive way and it worked really great. I mean, doesn't that look beautiful? That is so pretty. Literally just $4 of spray paint per can uh, I mean, you know, I went through a few cans. I think I went through six cans between those and then the stackable one over here. And that one, I was actually going to throw it out to the curb and let it go to trash. And I decided I'd go ahead and experiment on it because quite honestly, if I lost them, it didn't matter. I was going to throw them to the trash anyway. Well, it turned out pretty good, even though I wasn't careful. They got runs on them and stuff, but I thought, eh, who cares? I was a lot more careful with the other ones, but anyway, very inexpensive project. Really great fix to the problem. But I've got a bunch of flowers that I've purchased. We've had to take them into the basement a few different nights and cover them, things like that. But look how beautiful these are. And I, this is only the start. I'm kind of a floweraholic. This is my obsession. So a few different things that I'll be putting in some of the pots. I haven't done any of the pots out front yet at all and have only done these because I knew that we were going to have frost problems so I didn't want a whole lot to cover up and possibly risk losing but uh, anyway some of those will actually go into the landscape here I've got gobs of landscape underneath my linden here lots of hostas some of the grasses coral bells just a lot of pretty stuff and then with the perennials then I go ahead and sprinkle a few of the flowers in with it since it's a tree I put in things that can tolerate the shade so a lot of things like impatiens geraniums they don't care about anything it's sun shade they don't care begonias they're kind of about the same way so anyhow a lot of those kinds of things that I'll put in there some of the wave petunias I'll actually put those on the south side of the house because there's no shade any longer we used to have a huge tree there but that tree is since gone and the last couple days I've been working on a project. Uh, I had a lot of settlement problem with the rock and the bricks over the years. Well, I fixed the brick problem probably two years ago, but still had a little bit of an issue because I still had some settlement problem with the rock. But I had trap rock here. So here's what happened with that. It, you can kind of see where I put some of the fresh in. It's just not completely washed off yet. So it looks a little bit different. When it's wet, it looks exactly the same, but I added some to it. But I actually had a problem with the edging, and I'll show you what that is. With the freeze-thaw cycle, you get this, and it's definitely a maintenance issue. Um, it's one that I don't like having to do, but it's the difference between it looking okay or looking amazing. So here's my issue. So when you've got the edging down there you can kind of see some of the plastic popping up through there because you got the freeze thaw so it heaves 
And then all of a sudden it starts really heaving. And there it's completely heaved out. So it looks like a hot mess. But I had that on the south side of the patio last year or two years ago when I completely fixed everything and it has stayed in place. But the other three sides continued to heave up a little bit. So over here, I've actually got some of the rubber rock because when we had uh, the bulldog, she has since passed. But when we had her, she didn't like to step on the rock with her toe toes. So we had the stepping stones around and she would actually walk the stepping stones. So now the Shih Tzu walks the stepping stones too. We bought some of the rubber rock for part of the landscape so that it would be a little bit more Toto friendly. So we've got a lot of the rubber rock here that we put in. And it looks very similar to the trap rock. Although you can kind of see where I changed it up here and where the rubber meets the road. Rubber meets the trap rock. So we did that in only part of the area and then left the trap rock on everything else. And so now this is the time of year where I'm cleaning things up a bit and fixing things. And of course the patio edges, it's the first thing that anybody sees and the biggest issue to have to fix because it literally will take an entire day to fix that problem on one side because I have to pull all the rock back, um, actually clean it out, take some of the depth out of it if there's mud and things like that in there, which usually there is. So I take some of that out and then relay that edger so that it keeps the bricks in place because it will start pulling away and I'll have to fix that too. But you can see here, maybe, that that corner has kind of settled just a tiny bit, but I have OCD, so a tiny bit is too much for me. And in fact, uh, one of the things that I'll be doing is all the stepping stones here, they are incredibly dirty. So I always take the power washer and clean those up in the spring so it looks really good. It's been really cold here though, so I haven't done much outdoor work yet. Plus, even though there is the quarantine and the lockdown for everybody, my job is considered sustainable. So I am still out and about in the uh, public. And so work has been pretty hectic. I uh, haven't had much time to actually play with my flowers or my garden or my landscape or anything like that. And this is kind of my life. Um, when I'm not at Disney or working, I'm playing in my garden. So I look forward to this every single winter. This is like a big deal to me. But I, I don't remember when I started this landscape, but uh, when I first started it, the back of the house kind of looked like a, I don't know, haunted house or something. It was kind of cray cray. But anyhow, we had a huge tree there that was about 16 foot around, about where the smoker is at right now. You can see all my buckets and stuff. We use the five gallon buckets to also cover plants when we have the frost between the buckets and the sheets it probably took us about an hour to cover everything each night and you can't leave it covered because it would suffocate in the day I'll get the power washer out and clean out the patio area because it's a hot mess you see how dirty it gets it definitely needs some action in here I'm actually thinking about repainting this patio uh, when I did it this color, everything was kind of a burgundy on the flower pots and stuff. And now that I have kind of an aqua color or turquoise, um, the terracotta look doesn't look as fabulous as it once did. Uh, the hot tub cover and stuff, we kind of did it with the terracotta look or redwood or whatever. And that looked great with the burgundy. And the hot tub is gonna stay the same. I'm not gonna do anything different with it, I like it. But the patio area might just look a little bit dated to me, I don't know. But I'm gonna clean that up, get it all nice and wonderful again. And then like in here, I will probably put some of the geraniums and impatiens and just all kinds of fun stuff. And then of course, down the south side of the house, it's a real hot mess. Haven't had much time to get over there yet at all. But I thought when I get ready to do this, uh, do the north side of the patio, that I will probably set up the GoPro and do like a time lapse and incorporate it into this video so that you can see. But it's not really a difficult job. It is incredibly time consuming. 
and these little boogers right here. Ugh. I hate these things, hate them. Because I will spend hours and hours in the springtime picking these things up because they're just a hot mess and they get in the way of everything. I'll show you the south side, or the, yeah, the south side of the house here. Like I said, I haven't had much chance to work on the uh, weed situation yet. I've got different variety of spireas around the landscape. I can't, red flame spirea or something like that. I don't remember. That's a sedum right there. I can't think of what that little guy is there. He gets uh, kind of long flowers and they're really cute. And then I've got this white tuft stuff. I generally know the names of everything, but there's some stuff that's been here so long I just don't remember. And this is just starting to bloom. It is so pretty. It will be absolutely solid fuchsia once those open. It's gorgeous. And unfortunately, I think that I had a mole and he decided to nibble on my Japanese maple, which was so beautiful before and now it's dead, except for a little sprig at the bottom. So that's gonna have to come out. We started chopping it up and taking it out, but uh, that seriously makes me so sick to my stomach. It was absolutely fabulous and now it's dead. Over here, I'm probably going to, obviously I'm gonna weed and stuff like that. And then once I get that all done, I was thinking about possibly putting in the rubber mulch over here. It's been a long time since this area has gotten any action. This right here is a geranium that's a perennial. And then of course I got some columbine and they travel. You plant them in one place and then they go wherever they want. Take a look at this white. I mean, that's just so fabulous. It's just about done blooming now. It is so huge. It looks so fluorescent white when it's blooming. It's beautiful. And then over here, uh, I have started taking some of the weeds out and just piling them so that I could get them out of here. And this area I will put in wave petunias. And I usually put in about three of the big wave petunias. And within a couple weeks, it's just about filled up that entire area. I have multiple hydrangeas around the property. And there's another sedum. I've got red carpet lilies. Those will be phenomenal. And this hosta right here is one of my favorites. It's just so crazy and out of control with the leaves. There's nothing straight and even about it. That's one of the things I love about it. And then this right here, Spirea. I've got a few of those around the landscape because that's one of my favorites for sure. And a lot of hostas and stuff again. And of course those pots by the sidewalk will, uh, I'm going to repaint those. They need some attention. And the pots on the porch definitely need some attention. With the landscape, I have just been kind of obsessed with it for years. And I see I have Creeping Charlie, so that's awesome. And I will be spraying that soon. I have to kind of watch the weather because we've got storms and stuff coming in. I want to make sure that when I spray it, that I have plenty of time for the spray to work. Oops, I think I just threw that into my... Uh, into my rocks. I don't want to have to pull that out later. Whew, it's kind of cold out here. But of course, whenever you're into landscape and stuff, there are lots and lots of projects to work on at all times. Uh, one of the things that I actually laid all of these bricks and stuff, I'm pretty proud about that. When we put this in, we had nothing back here, nothing. So it was grass and a 16 foot tree, a 16 foot around the base, I should say. But when we decided to do this, we had to have semi loads of rock and sand, had to have a lot of rolls of the fabric, gobs of pins, uh, had to have a bobcat back here moving dirt and rock and sand. And uh, then we had to have semi loads of topsoil brought in 
in order to finish it off. And what started out to be a patio became an oasis because of my OCD, I guess. I don't know. But I do love landscape and it is my escape from stress. And so over the years, I've just kind of added to it here and there. But with the help of Gary and Joe and our friend Tom, he ran the Bobcat. But we had uh, two and a half pallets of bricks delivered. And I laid every single brick in this patio and I've maintained it over the years. I'm trying to think of when this went in. It's probably been here 10 or 12 years, I'm guessing. Probably a fairly good guess. But two and a half pallets of brick. And we just had to kind of figure out what kind of pattern we wanted and it took me a while to come up with exactly what I wanted. But it turned out really great and thankfully I had so much help with all of the landscape and all the planting. Gary helps me out with a lot of the planting because there's so much to maintain that it becomes very overwhelming. But at the same time I help him with his too. He worked on his today but I had to work so uh, I didn't get an opportunity to play in my flowers today and the weather was perfect for it and it's supposed to thunderstorm tomorrow. That's the way it goes. Flowers will be there the next day for it. Um, but anyway, I uh, just wanted to go ahead and show you guys some of the stuff that I have in my garden and I'll probably do a time lapse of planting some of this as well. That bad edge up on the north there, I, had a, I just fixed this side. This is the west side. And I just fixed it a few days ago and then added the additional rock in after I fixed the edging. It looks pretty amazing now. And then on the east side, I did that yesterday afternoon and it was a fairly quick job. Probably took me a couple hours to do it. It wasn't really bad. Didn't have to take it all the way out. I had to take out an entire strip down here. And then over here, I only had to take out part of a strip. So a lot of it stayed in place, but I just used uh, gloves and pulled the rock back completely. And then I took like a hand trowel and dug out all of the excess garbage that had gotten in there, the dirt and the sand and the rock and stuff that just kind of gets mixed together. I took it out of there and then sunk that trim strip down a little bit farther and it took care of the problem and then put it all back into place after I spiked it. The problem is with the Midwest, you've got the freeze thaw that pushes the pins up and once the pins are up, then the plastic starts heaving up into the air and um, yeah, then you got another project on your hands. This thing right here, like the flower pots, I like to put unusual stuff in them just so that, that way it doesn't look like a flower pot. It just looks, it kind of takes it to another level. But I found, this cool thing at a an antique store actually and fell in love with it and decided that would look pretty good in a flower pot so that's kind of a hundred dollar decoration in a flower pot but to me it makes it so four dollars on spray paint but a hundred dollars on a weather vane choose your battles i guess but anyway it looks really amazing out here and when I sit out here on my patio I feel good about it and I can look out at everything and right now it's kind of dreary out so everything doesn't look so fabulous but it will and the other day I came out took a couple different days to trim up all the bushes back here because there's 10 that go along the north fence line so oh, sounds like the buzzards want to kill me or something waiting for me to die I don't know but I absolutely love these. I think that it dresses it up and makes it very old fashioned. The rhododendron back there in the back flower bed is going to be blooming soon. So it will be beautiful. The magnolia tree only bloomed for about a day. And then we had a hard freeze and the next day everything went brown and fell off. So unfortunately I didn't really get to see the magnolia bloom for very long and that's kind of a bummer. Then along the back fence line, uh, those little bitty bushes, those are flowering quince, and quince will actually put little fruit on it, which I didn't know that until recent years, but 
they have little fruit and you can make jelly and stuff like that. The goofy little fence over here, we really didn't want to put fence along the entire yard because it would make everything feel so small and closed off. And we've got amazing neighbors, so we really didn't want to close that off either. But we needed something to keep the dogs from possibly wandering out of the yard and also keep uh, neighbor animals from wandering in the yard. But so that was kind of our fix to it. It works. It's not Mr. Obvious, but it uh, I've learned to overlook it over time. It just kind of blends in a little bit, a little bit more than a white fence would. We built this white picket fence. Oh gosh, it's probably been about the same 12 years. I know we had the patio in before we built the fence and then we had to wait I think uh, till the second year before we could stain it. That's actually white stain. And it just looks amazing to me, but stain won't peel bad like paint will. So we went with stain and then just had to do uh, two or three layers in order for it to be white. And then when we restain it, which we've only had to do one time so far in all of those years, it still takes two coats though, but you definitely have to have one person on one side and one person on the other so that you don't end up with runs and drips and stuff from the stain itself. But it looks pretty incredible and everybody thinks it's a vinyl fence, but it's not. We sat down in the basement and tried to come up with our design and laid all the boards down on the ground, <laughs> on the floor in the basement. And that actually worked out really well so that we could do it different ways. I wanted it to look authentic to the style of house. We have a craftsman bungalow and it's a little over a hundred years old, about 108 I believe. And so we wanted everything to be authentic. We didn't want it to look like we went to Lowe's and bought some fence panels. So we actually built those and then we did it in a way that we can actually take off a panel if we need to. We've got little brackets there so that we can get in get it out if we need to so that was pretty cool i didn't want it to necessarily be in, incredibly permanent uh, if we needed to move something in the, into the yard so we have eight foot sections in the back and then on that side part because it didn't really go very far across the side of the yard uh, it would have looked strange everything would have been in the wrong place and i wanted four foot gate uh, on on a couple different places. So we went with six foot panels and then we just kind of laid everything back out to make sure it looked like it was exactly the same and looked like it tied in instead of looking like we made a mistake. But anyhow, it turned out really good. The tops of them, I didn't want it to be just a cut straight across. So we took a coffee can lid, a little coffee can lid, so that we had the perfect size circle and just drew it out and then jigsawed it, sanded it and then uh, air nailed it all together and then put up entire panels at once and it turned out really good. And because of the fact that our yard is not real level from the house to the garage, then we went ahead and kind of stair-stepped it. But it turned out really good to stair-step it like that. It just completely eliminated the issue of the fact that we didn't have anything level looks amazing I love it but anyhow I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera uh, as soon as it warms up and start planting some flowers and that way that I can do some time-lapse and put it in here and show off a little bit of my obsession and what it is that we're kind of doing during our quarantine time uh, Gary's been here a couple times we've kept him quarantined a lot because of his illness uh, if he got sick from this COVID, he doesn't really have an immune system, so he probably would not survive it. So he spent minimal time with me and minimal time with anybody. When he's been around me, uh, we either keep distance uh, or he wears his mask. And that makes us both feel a lot safer about things but he has offered to come up and help me get things ready because he knows this is, it's a big job and we always do it together uh, just because the fact it's a lot. But hopefully you'll enjoy it.